Welcome to day three of the Classic Roundup. Another full on day here today at the Alex Centre in Tamworth. We had the second round of the Pride's Easy Feed Performance Horse Challenge. That has uh, concluded today, so the finalists have been announced. We also this morning started the first round of the Charlie Ma Memorial Young Guns, which was very expertly judged by Kimberly Salmon, who we will be catching up with later in the program. So, Felicity, expectations have been met. The, the challenge, Josh Smith, back at the, at the at lead the of that. We'll go into more depth with the, the young guns, but yeah, just another outstanding day. It was great, wasn't it? And, um, you know, to be honest, the cattle today in the challenge were phenomenal. That I think we've, you know, found um, what really works for this indoor deal and the working cow horse, and it was great to see some fantastic runs in there and some good horses. There were some big, big runs. The, the Frisians, they were, they were exceptional as we thought. Um, there were some other steers in there that, you know, if people had the horse and the horsepower behind them. They could do a job with them, couldn't absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to go back through and recap the first half of the classic camp draft that concluded last night with the 200 runs. The leaderboard didn't change from the top. Ben Hall riding Rathcool Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. The one stylish Pepto. Um, so we've also got the in that one stylish Pepto syndicate. They've got an incentive. Uh, do you know how much it is, Brett? It's fifty thousand dollars on top of any prize, but Fair he on. must win the classic. Yeah, right. Sounds good like a pretty good character put out there, isn't it? So Will Durkin, Lee Lucas, Cello. That was back in ninety points. Then Will had another one, A Mac Duckman, owned by Lloyd Hick. A Hazelwood con man out of Almora Double Duckling, which I believe Double Duckling won a grandfather clock with. She did, Ben McNaughton. Ben McNaughton. McNaughton. Yep. She's been a great producer, and I'm, um, I might be mistaken, but I think there has been one go back through the sale out of her. So, um, you know, that just goes to show that depth of breeding again coming back through the sale. Back on 89 points, we see another contender for the $50,000 one stylish Pepto bonus is Pete Comiskey riding a. A mare called One Stylish Rose, owned by Noel Shikoni. We've got to watch Pete, two-time Willinga Park gold buckle champion, won 100 grand twice. It's got to be hard to beat, hasn't he? Well, uh, the pressure's never worried him. Yeah, yeah that's true. Good and, point. Uh, equal fourth and fifth with uh, One Stylish Rose was Ben Hall riding horse pledged, owned by the CM Pastoral Company, 89 points. It's... It's... Yeah, it's just exceptional. Speaking of the CM Pastoral mm. Company, I, I've just seen Pete O'Neill down there get around on Confedera. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, so the breeding keeps coming back to the top. Yep, and it's so nice to see Craig and Carolyn up there, you know, in the um, winner's circle in that first round. They put a lot back into the Classic and the Classic Ladies Foundation. Carolyn has a massive part to play there, so that's a big um, charity that they're running and, and, you know, they'll be doing some stuff over the course of the Nutrien event in this week coming. So thank you very much to Carolyn for that contribution and I'm very glad that you've had some success so far. So we've also got the Young Guns. Um, right there at the top we've got Matt Moffat on Cat Swift, um, that's a horse of Zane Haberman's and uh, that horse, is all, the Swift horses we've seen come through and be at the top of the leaderboard in the open with Zane in previous years, um, there's a lot of breeding there too. That horse is um, by Cat Skills, out of Z some of um, Zane's, or one of Zane's top mares that has really reproduced and goes back to a great, to a grand dam, um, Haberman Swift. That's, and we're talking like bred in, you know, foaled in the 1970s. So it's not just like that this mare, you know, had turned up and um, produced something yesterday. You know, she's got a lot of foals on the ground that have gone on to be fantastic mothers. And um, yeah, it sort of, it means a lot to that family. And it's really nice to see that, you know, they're at the top of the leaderboard again. So congratulations to the Haberman family. And well done, Matt Moffat, for piling it, piloting that horse around. Now, to recap the Pride's Easy Feed Challenge, Felicity, you know, being a previous winner, well, how did you see the event today? I think it was fantastic. And the standard of horses and the standard of riders is just getting better and better every year. I know we say that every year, but it's true. It is, it's, um, it's actually very entertaining to sit down and watch. 
and the arena surface is fantastic where the guys are spending a lot of time um, with the drag and making sure that you know every 15 runs we're getting that surface right and prepped for our riders so I think that's really important and and um, it allows our competitors to show their horses off to the best of their ability. So we're going to go to a break and after the break we catch up with the Charlie Ma Memorial Young Guns Judge Kimberly Salmon. Righto, so this afternoon we've got Kimberly Salmon, our judge for the Young Guns Camp Draft this afternoon. Welcome Kimberly, thanks for joining us. Thanks Misty. Right. Kimberly. So Kim, you are um, the, the lady that everybody looks up to in my eyes. You know, I think especially my generation, um, we've learnt a lot from watching you and you know, you've gone and won two ladies silver cups at Warwick. You've been second in the gold cup. You've been third at Willinga Park. You've, you've been second in the ACA Open Rider title twice. Like what a magnificent, oh yes sir. And one at Canning Dance. Oh yes, I'm, I'm getting to that. There's a really <laughs> long list, all right? I thought I did well to memorize that much. Um, so, you know, Kimberly, everybody turns and watches you when you ride in the yard. What did you think of the Young Guns today? I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I rode up there this morning flipping, I was nervous. Yeah, I was yeah. like, all oh, these poor kids, they're going to have to deal with me today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I settled in and I was, I was, it was outstanding to see the quality of cattle. Yeah. And the other thing I sort of picked up on, you're sitting there, you're watching and, you know, the kids, the way they treated the cattle. Um, yes. I sort of asked them not to, you know, mistreat the cattle, not to gallop back in and oh, they unbelievable so yeah that they were spot on I thought the cattle lasted I mean they changed them in every 25 but yeah that was good but they were still settled you know it was yeah it was a true credit to them mm. and it's always imperative that we're looking after the welfare of the cattle and um, it's so nice to hear that you know you, you've witnessed that today that the and the, this is the next generation coming through and doing the right thing by our sponsors so it's fantastic we got a little bit of a red complexion there at the moment. Obviously, it was a bit hot out there today. Yeah, well, it was a bit warm. <laughs> it was. I said, funny, he's brought that up. I said to Jess, oh, I've got to go up and do this interview, and I'm a bit nervous. Do you think I should wear makeup? And she goes, no. And I said, well, how bad do I look out of one to ten? She went, oh. You know, six and a half. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Jesus, this is a just nice and honest. Oh, dear. Kimberly, it must have been a... a a huge buzz to see horses that we normally see, you know, other competitors ride like the Hazelwood Congressman and Jasper Adios Acres. To still see them come out there perform for that younger generation that, you know, don't probably get to ride them all that much. But how generous of these owners to say, well, here's our A grade horse, go out there. Like, that's how. That's how big prestige there is on this Young Guns, at Charlie Moore Memorial Young Guns, yeah. that everyone is, you know, just Jim or PJs, you know, there's Duck and yeah. Down, there's the, Chevin Ivory was in there, like the service fee that's that a part of the prize pool is a breeding to, to Ivory. And yeah. to see those horses compete must have been a big buzz. It was, and, and what really stood out is is the level, you know, I mean, the, the Young Guns, they're top competitors and they do ride hard, but then there's, um, I wouldn't say lesser competitors, but ones that don't ride as hard and they still step up and they get on those open horses and you just can't fault them. Yeah. yeah, they were soft and they just true to a cow and you know, just it was quite phenomenal to watch. Yes. I think we really need to point out too that um, this is the seventh Charlie Ma Memorial Young Guns Camp Draft. It was created um, seven years ago alongside of Mark Barton and, and something that was really important to Charlie was to see young people coming through the ranks. And like Bardo mentioned before that, you know, his um, his Charlie's biggest thing in life was to see young people coming through the ranks, to see the new horse, um, you know, in the snaffle bit futurity, to get one started and, and um, go and win a maiden camp draft. So, you know, I think it's, it's really special that we're seeing new combinations and new horses and, and these new people coming through. I don't like to admit that I am getting a little bit older and I see these kids coming through and it's like, 
what's going on? You know, I'm sure that kid was only 10 and now he's in the under 25s. Um, it is, it is really exciting and it's just so nice to have that platform to have these young people. Yeah, I think um, it's fantastic. It. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. We see the level of com competitive that have come through the young guns. You know, you look at Huey Miles when he won it. Yep. You know, there's Sorry, he's Wyatt Young. Who is Huey Miles? He's still in it. Um, he's yeah. a local. <laughs> he's a local. Local <laughs> like bloke. Yeah. And just the calibre of you know they've turned out to be some of the you know the high profile people in our sport and yes, this sale. Right. So it's it's quite you know for the probably the younger end of the young guns to look up and go, well, look what it's done to that guy. He He's won that or she's won the Young Guns and now it's put him on to that next level. But you know what, with this Young Guns event, yes, we've had Huey, we've had Ben McNaughton, you know, these names that have gone on being big trainers. But the year that was most memorable for me so far is Maddie Maloney winning it. Um, I think, you know, Maddie is, she's actually doesn't live too far from where I am in Queensland. And it was just so nice to see such a level-headed young lady go in and win on this fantastic horse of Mully's. Um, and it just goes to show you get mounted on a good horse and you're a rider, you know, you're um, a talented rider, but maybe don't get to these big shows. And you're at the big show, you've got the, an equal chance to win this money. There's 12 grand in cash, $17,000 in cash and prizes in total to win. So. It's fantastic. But we look back at last year, Bo Botel from South East yeah, Queensland. Yeah, yeah. He's come down, he, he's had tuition with Huey, he steps on to raise your gun yeah. and wins the it's young guns. Like, yeah. Look what it's done for, for the confidence and, and it's just brought, you know, Bo along into, a, into, yeah. an, into another level. Well, what about Angus um, Capel? He's set, currently second on Congressman with a 90. Um, he does a bit of work for Rob Bleach, you know, here and there, um, on and off comes and, and helps him out and learns along the way. Um, his family is a sheep family at Manila. Um, so, you know, it's just great that he gets that support and gets the ride on these good horses. Um, <coughs> in equal second, third is uh, Charlotte Ramsden riding Jats Bar Adios Acres of John and Barbara Lee, the, the winner of the Stallion Shootout mm -hmm. last year. A local competitor from the Tamworth area, you know, parents are, are into the horses, lovely family, like they, they show stock horses and, you know, it's just a, it's a credit to, to, you know, the stallion owners, but, you know, those, those young guns have stepped up and it's, it's a, you know, truly amazing event. Kimberly, what were some highlights, like as in, you know, big rounds or, you know, just things that made it so enjoyable to sit out? Because, you were out there a fair while and it was hot and, and yes. you know, for someone to sit out there and concentrate from 7 o'clock this morning yeah. all the way through, like that's a, it's a big effort and you should be congratulated on, you know, from where you started to where you finished. It was the same when you finished and, yeah, it's... Thanks, Brett. Um, I think highlights are watching these young guys ride these top stallions. Um, and just the way they do it, and not just stallions, the, the top mares as well, it, it's exciting. I see them ride in the camp and, and everyone knows the horse and just to see how they handle that horse and how they... The they, horse handles them. Yeah, yeah, and I just think it's amazing. Like there was some big runs, but there was other runs that were big runs outside and they might have dropped the yard or something. And, you know, they were equally as good to watch just tiny little things that they do and I sort of look and go, oh, you even learn stuff sitting up yeah, there, yeah, you know, I go, you, yeah. it's amazing, you know. It's funny you say that you learn stuff. We, we had Tim Hollis on last night and we know that he's had some very big judging jobs and, and he finds it so, so exciting that he's watching everyone else and he used the term their craft. Yeah. So he said, he said, I sit out there and I can watch them and, and I'm learning their craft when I'm out the front and, and that's a real big, that's yep. a big buzz if you can do that. Yeah, I think so and I mean I had to keep reminding myself to turn back and give the guys the scores because I get <laughs> really, I'm really into this run and he's pulled up and I'm still watching. I wonder him. what he's yeah, going to get. That's great, yeah. Ooh. Wait, I'm judging. <laughs> so yeah, but it is, it's, it's really awesome to watch those guys. Yeah. Kimberly, on behalf of the Nutrient team, we'd like to thank you for, you know, your commitment, enthusiasm and, and being our knee, not only you know, you're judging an event and, you know, it's clean cut, but, you know, the the enthusiasm and the confidence you give those, you know, young guns and that to ride in there, it's a, yeah, we thank you very much. And, and after the break, we're going to come back and we're going to review tomorrow's events on day four at the Nutrient Classic at Tamworth.
G'day, I'm Peel Tribe from Navajo Trailers in Warwick, Queensland. We build custom made truck bodies, trays, crates, force floats, goosenecks and accommodation living trailers. From basic designs to high end finishes, we offer personalised service with experience where it counts. So day four is going to be huge here at Tamworth at the ALEC Centre. We start off tomorrow with all scores going into the second round of the Martin Stock Haulage Open Camp Draft. Then we'll go on to round two of the Nutrient Classic Camp Draft where once again we will see all scores go into the second round. That's hot off the press from Mark Barden. We're still only early days into the second half of the first round of the Classic, but they've already made the commitment that all scores will go into the second round. So that's a huge, huge announcement. Then we'll go to the First round of the Pride's Easy Feed National Camp Draft Rider title. And then the final of the Pride's Easy Feed Performance Horse Challenge. We thought we had a big day today, Felicity. <laughs> day four is going to be huge. It is, isn't it? It is going to be huge. Um, this afternoon, I thought in the um, classic camp draft, how interesting was it that, that it cooled off a little bit this afternoon, the cattle seemed better, but they're the same cattle, so it's interesting how the weather, you know, changes things a bit. But it, there's also one other contributing factor that it might be that, you know, a lot of people tend to save their second horse, uh, as their better horse as their, their second one or, you know, later in the program. So they get to know the ground, they get to know the cattle, um, and they've relaxed a bit, they're not so nervous. So I thought that was a really interesting point. I haven't thought of that, but I might have to put a bit more thought into it. <laughs> well, I know it. I always save my second horse till, till last, so mate, maybe you should give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> might get a ribbon yeah, then. Maybe. <laughs> yep. Tomorrow night we've got the Pride's Easy Feed Performance Horse Challenge final, and we've got 22 going back into the final, um, 25 riders riding all up in that final. The last three are the Young Guns. They're part of the Young Guns Incentive. There's actually five Young Guns that are eligible for that. $5,000 up for that Young Guns Incentive. Um, but two of which have actually cl uh, they've qualified for that open um, uh, the, for the open challenge as well. So they're up, they can go and win the horse float and then they can go and win, uh, you know, there's another five grand in there for that Young Guns Incentive. Um, Brett, we've got equal leaders, Josh Smith and Adam Roble. I'm pretty sure that's the closest any closest anyone's got to um, you know being on GM Hard's heels. So it's going to be very entertaining. It's going to be a huge final, and it's, to those guys, they are going to be, you know, it's going to be so exciting to see what they do in the dry work, then trot up and let a cow out. Yeah, clean slate final. For those two, it's going to be yeah. because yeah, yeah. they're going in on the equal lead. Yeah, I know right. it's an, an aggregate all the way Sorry, through, but, but those guys, it's who's the best on the night. Yeah, and that's going to be exciting. That you know, whoever runs down there and gets the biggest stop, or turns around in a blur, or gets a cow. Yeah, it's there's no there's no gimmies or giveaways tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right. The gelding incentive, I think there's three people that can take the gelding incentive money. And two of those, Michael Wilson's got two, and Huey Miles, the other competitor. Look out. Tell me those two guys <laughs> won't pin the ears That's back. right. Yeah, that's going to make for some good entertainment. Um, I reckon you might have one in there too, mate. Yeah, I've got a little little sneaky one coming in there. So, yeah, yeah it's good just Well, look, be... there's only eight points from the top to the bottom in that final. So that's um, not much at all. You know, we, that's only... As each manoeuvre in that dry work's ten points. So you slip up a little bit there and... Well, we're hoping the leaders slip up, mate, for your case. But be a bit like Peter Moody. <laughs> little, little one for the battlers. That's it. We've always got a back one for the team, haven't we? Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, for day three of our classic roundup. Please join us tomorrow for day four. We've got a massive day ahead of us, and uh, we can't wait to bring it to you. Mm -hmm.